So notice uh, B has 342, but C, well C has 298, but notice B wins in both of these, right? So B wins again with how many votes? Well, 342 plus 214, which is 556 votes. And so we can see that just from the chart because if we're doing just B versus C, then we pretend there's no A, right? But if we pretend there's no A, observe that B is on top for these first two columns, and then C is on top for that third column. So B is gonna win in this case as well. So let's look at this over here. So if we look at head-to-head -head matches, B wins against any candidate, right? So it seems like if B wins every head-to-head -head match, it should win the whole election, right? That seems to be a reasonable expectation. But in this instant runoff voting, that doesn't happen, right? In this instant runoff voting, C wins. Oh, and then it's actually a bigger problem here because what if we do just plurality, in other words, one round and who has the most first place votes? Well, if we just look at the original ballot, the person with the most first place votes is A. So A wins. So I think this example is a nice highlighter of kind of the problem with voting systems in general. And well, all of these methods seem reasonable, right? Then whoever gets the most first place votes wins. That seems reasonable. Well, A wins the election if that's our rule. Instant runoff voting, that seems like a reasonable method, right? C wins if we do that. Looking at head-to-head -head matches and seeing who wins the most head-to-head -head matches, that seems reasonable also, right? Well, B wins with that. But notice there are only three candidates, A, B, and C, and we put this election through three different tabulation methods and we got three different winners, right? And so, you know, that's like what we're gonna see as we explore these voting methods is, well, none of these voting methods can be made perfectly fair, right?